This is the Comac C919, China's first homegrown narrow-body jet that's been in development for more than a decade. This is Boeing's 737 MAX, the American plane that dominates narrow-body markets worldwide. Narrow-body aircraft account for more than half of the global passenger fleet. And that's a big reason why Beijing has spent tens of billions of dollars trying to build its own. The timing looked perfect. There it is, or as President Xi Jinping calls it, the dream of a nation. The Comac C919 is a passenger plane that's domestically made in China, and is touted as China's answer to aviation giants Airbus and Boeing. Boeing's reputation has been battered. Airbus is sold out for years. So we examined how China tried to challenge Boeing, and why that strategy hasn't worked. Short and medium haul flights typically use narrow body jets. One aisle down the middle, three seats on each side, flights of four or five hours. This category, the 737s and A320s, makes up more than half of all passenger aircraft globally. It's where airlines make their money. These planes fly constantly, often completing multiple trips per day. For years, Boeing and Airbus have controlled this market as a duopoly. China has watched billions of dollars flow to Seattle and Toulouse while buying these jets for its own rapidly expanding aviation market. Beijing wanted to change that equation. In 2008, the Chinese government established COMAC, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, with a mission to build airliners that could compete with Boeing and Airbus. China hasn't disclosed how much it's invested in COMAC, but aerospace analysts estimate the state-owned company has received between $49 to $72 billion in government support. Richard Abulafia, a respected aerospace analyst and managing director at Aerodynamic Advisory, states that China's ambition to rival the United States in Boeing and aviation is a long-standing national goal. The flagship project C919, a narrow-body jet, roughly the same size and capacity as Boeing's 737's MAX or the Airbus A320. If COMAC could succeed with this aircraft, China could supply its own airlines with domestic jets and eventually, perhaps sell them internationally. The company's approach to developing the plane would determine whether that strategy could work. China didn't reinvent what a short-haul jet looks like. From a distance, the C919 resembles a 737 or an A20. Single aisle, two engines under the wings, similar passenger capacity and range, but the approach to building it was different. Instead of developing every major system domestically, Comac relied heavily on Western suppliers. The engines come from CFM International, a joint venture between General Electric and Francis Safran. The avionics, flight control computers, and landing gear also depend on American and European companies. This approach offered one advantage. Using components with proven track records in Western jets reduces technical risk. In theory, that allows you to focus on building the airframe and integrating the systems. In practice, it created dependencies that would become difficult to manage. The United States has long accused China of seeking to obtain advanced technologies for military use. Beijing has repeatedly denied these claims, but those tensions have affected civil aviation. In January 2021, the Trump administration added COMAC to a list of companies it said supported China's military. This restricted the plane manufacturer's access to American technology and funding. COMAC was later removed when President Biden issued a revised list. Even temporary restrictions send signals to Western suppliers. Any partnership with COMAC can suddenly become subject to export controls. Aerospace analysts say this makes some companies reluctant to provide COMAC with their most advanced systems. They'll supply proven hardware, but they're more cautious about cutting-edge technology and intellectual property. Abu Lafia explains the challenge. There's this sword hanging over the C919, and a lot of it does come down to geopolitics. The C919 depends on Western components to meet performance standards, but that same dependence limits how far the program can advance. The C919 is currently certified to fly by China's aviation regulator, the CAAC. That's why airlines like China Eastern have started operating it on domestic routes. But international sales typically require approvals from other regulators, especially the FAA in the United States or EASA in Europe. Those certifications do more than permit landing rights. They signal to insurers, pilots and passengers that a design has met the same standards as Boeing and Airbus aircraft. The C919 doesn't have those foreign certifications yet. That limits its realistic market to China for now. Boeing, despite highly publicized 737 MAX crises, has decades of operating history. It has extensive data, worldwide training infrastructure, and established maintenance networks. COMAC doesn't have that foundation. Every C919 requires new training programs, new procedures, and new considerations for airlines evaluating a purchase. For carriers outside China, that represents significant additional investment and risk. Designing a commercial jet is difficult. Mass producing it safely and consistently is harder. Boeing and Airbus each deliver dozens of single-aisle aircraft per month when production runs smoothly. They've spent decades developing supply chains, assembly processes, and quality controls. COMAC is at the beginning of that learning curve. After years of development, 
only a small number of C919 have been completed and delivered to airlines. Aviation manufacturing requires exact conformity. Every airframe must match the approved design precisely. Small variations, repeated across thousands of aircraft, can create safety issues or cause major delays. Even experienced manufacturers struggle with this. Boeing's recent production and quality problems demonstrate that challenge. For Comac, with far less experience, the path is steep. Cautious, limited production may be the right approach for safety. But it also means the C919 cannot quickly absorb global demand the way a true 737 competitor would need to. On paper, the C919's order book appears substantial. Hundreds of aircraft across multiple customers. But most of those orders come from Chinese airlines and leasing companies. Many are controlled by the same state apparatus that owns Comac. The orders are real, but they're driven by government policy as much as commercial calculation. What's missing is a significant number of foreign airlines committing their resources and reputations to the aircraft. Boeing built its narrow-body business by selling to carriers worldwide, then supporting those fleets with a global network of spare parts, maintenance providers, and training centers. For the C919, that ecosystem barely exists outside China. An airline in Africa, Europe, or South America would need to build much of that infrastructure to operate even a small fleet of C919s. Alex Kretz notes the challenge. There's vast networks that Boeing has that Comac has to develop. In a high-risk, low-margin industry, that's a difficult proposition. China's approach appeared to offer a path forward. Use Western technology to achieve acceptable performance quickly. Use state backing to guarantee domestic orders. Use that scale to eventually enter international markets. But each element of that strategy came with complications. Relying on Western components created vulnerability to export controls and intellectual property concerns. State-directed orders produced numbers, but not international credibility. And attempting to scale production without decades of experience has slowed the program precisely when airlines need aircraft quickly. Boeing has faced serious challenges. Recent accidents and quality issues have damaged its reputation significantly. But even weakened, it remains the established, supported option for most airlines outside China. The C919 hasn't changed that calculation yet. If the goal was simply to build a modern airliner that can safely carry passengers within China, the C919 represents real progress. China now has engineers and factories with hands-on experience designing and certifying a commercial jet. Good gut the broader ambition was different, to challenge Boeing's position in the narrow-body market. On that measure, the results are clear. The C919 remains heavily dependent on foreign components. It faces ongoing geopolitical risk. It lacks broad international certification and a global support infrastructure, and it has almost no independent overseas customers. Boeing's 737, despite everything, remains a default choice for airlines around the world. China hasn't broken Boeing's control of the narrow body market. At most, it has established a protected domestic position. China attempted to accelerate into a market that Boeing and Airbus spent half a century building. What it discovered is that in aviation, experience and trust cannot be shortcut.